Sitting there, I was looking at this uh, title, and I want to have not will. I want to have not one line. Love can save the world. I would like three lines. Love can save the world. Love is saving the world. You agree? Yes. And love will save the world. Yes. People quite often tell me that world is so bad, so much conflict, so much war, so much destruction of the environment, and so much problem, so much despair. I ask them, look at the world. We have more than seven billion people on this earth. Tell me, how many people are engaged in the war? I know I have some friends here who, are, who is from the Middle East, and there are a lot of problems there. But even in the Middle East, take heart, take hope. Even in the Middle East, there are millions of mothers feeding their babies, millions of lovers loving each other. Millions of farmers are growing food. Millions and millions of people are engaged in love. Loving each other. Love is that which is saving the world. Not politicians. Not even NGOs. Not even so-called spiritual masters. It's the love saving the world. And there's a more love in the world than there is a hate. There's a more compassion in the world than there is war and cruelty. I know we mustn't ignore cruelty. We must not ignore what's wrong. But it's better to light a candle like we have candles there. This beautiful, Alexandra has made this beautiful um, artwork. Better to light a candle then curse the darkness. So, I would say, spiritual ecology is that candle. Now, when people talk about spirituality and, uh, and talk about spiritual ecology, we are called enemies of reason. I'm one of them. And Richard Dawking, has given me the title. <laughs> and I'm happy to have that title. <laughs> and he interviewed me, and he said, Mr. Kumar, I don't believe in spirituality. I said, Professor Doking, you are professor at the university, a famous university called Oxford. Please tell me, do you understand the meaning of the word spirit? And I tell you, Professor Richard Dawking doesn't understand the meaning of the word spirit. I said, spirit word comes from breathing. Don't you believe in breathing? <laughs> Go to your dictionary, Oxford dictionary. You are professor at Oxford. <laughs> Go to your dictionary and look. Inspirare, expirare. Inspirare, to breathe in, to expirare, to breathe out. When you stop breathing, you are dead. <laughs> Don't you believe in breathing? Don't you believe in spirit? Everything breathes. We all breathe. We are spiritual beings. We are not just body. Body is there as a container of the spirit. We love the body. We look after our body. Body is very important as a container of the spirit. If there's no spirit, what's the body good of? They, it will make a good coffin, a place in a coffin or a grave. It's the spirit. So if we lose the spirit, now science, and I was just talking to somebody here who is making a film about 
um, beyond reason. And I said to him that science word, again, go to the meaning of the word, like spirit. Go to the meaning of the word. Science simply means knowledge. But the scientists now, so-called scientists, have hijacked the word, reduced its meaning, and they mean science means measured knowledge. Empirical knowledge. Evidence-based knowledge. Recently, I read a very scientific great discovery. After long, long research, spending lots and lots of money, professors in universities like Oxford, and they discovered something. What did they discover? Walking is good for your health. <laughs> I would have told them that without a penny spending. I would have told them that I'm 78 years old and I'm in good health. Why? I have been walking. I've been walking, as Will said, from India to Moscow to Paris to London to Washington, D.C. 8,000 miles. Two and a half years. Not a single day I had a cough or cold or fever or tummy ache or, or any kind of illness for two and a half years. Not a single day I had any illness. When you don't walk, when you are not in nature, you are just sitting in front of your computer or in front of your television, in your armchair, and say, I can't walk. I don't have time to walk. I have to Google. <laughs> and then scientists say, oh, at least walking at least two or three days a week is good for your health. I say to people, that change NHS meaning, the word NHS. NHS is not National Health Service. NHS is Natural Health Service. Natural Health Service. Go in nature. Tune with nature. Commune with nature. Be in nature. Sit under the trees. We have lost that sense of the sacred of nature. Again, I'm very interested in English language. And I always go to the root of the meaning of the word. And I say, where does sacred word come from? The sac we say, life is sacred. We say, mother who is sacred. Why? Life sacrifices itself to maintain life. Why mother who is sacred? Mother sacrifices her comfort her convenience for the well-being to bring a new child and well-being of the child into the world. She carries this child in the womb for nine months. If I have to carry a bag for two hours, I say, oh, my hand is tired. My hand is tired. I have to carry a suitcase. Can the taxi man take my suitcase? Or can the hotel man can take my suitcase? Can you, I say to reception people in the hotel, or if I occasionally stay there, I say, can you send somebody to take my suitcase to my room? It's heavy. But mother carries the baby for nine months, not in her arms, but in her tummy. Every mother is a hero. Every mother is a hero. Bringing a child in this world, and not only bringing a child in this world, but feeding the world of the child, and it's a world, feeding the child with her own body. The universe sacrifices and puts the milk in the breast of, her, of the mother. What a great miracle. You don't believe in spirit. You don't believe in magic. You don't believe in miracle. Richard Dawking, tell me scientifically, how did that milk come in the mother's breast? Tell me scientifically, and with your reason, tell me. Mother who is sacred, because mother gives herself to bring the child up in the world. Nature is sacred, why? Nature is our mother. Nature provides everything what we need. Our lives are not maintained by Tesco. <laughs> Our lives are not maintained by Barclays Bank or HSBC or anything. I make, uh, I take, I'll make exception for Triodos Bank, because <laughs> I bank with them. 
our wealth does not come from banks or businesses or multinational corporations or industry. Our wealth comes from nature. The land is real wealth. Our forests are real wealth. Chloe was telling me the, the old teachings of Christianity of Jesus. Angels, angels are not just your imaginative uh, sort of in your dreams or your imagination. Air is angel. Water is angel. Soil is angel. They bring all what we need. Economy is completely dependent on ecology. If there's no nature, there's no economy. All our food, our clothes, our shoes, our houses, all our wood, everything comes from the soil. This is why I wrote my book, Soil, Soul, Society. Actually, those three lines there, I put the other way around. I put care for the planet first. Soil. Because we are dependent on the planet. Self comes after. And then I put self-care in the middle, soul. And I put uh, care for the other, society, as the third. So I would like Will to change this order if he can. <laughs> because we can't put ourselves first. Although I say in my talks, when I talk about soul, I say you cannot love the world if you don't love yourself. And loving yourself is not selfish. Don't think that, oh, I can't love myself. Even Jesus taught us that love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. As you love yourself. Jesus took it for granted that everybody will love themselves. Only thing I have to teach is to love your neighbor. And now, we always think about loving the neighbor, somebody else, but we don't think about loving ourselves. So loving yourself, self, not your ego, not your ego, but yourself. That very big difference. Ego desires recognition. Ego desires someone else to love me. Ego desires praise from someone else. Ego desires awards. Praise, name, fame, all those external success. That's ego. But self desires love. Not recognition, but love. And love, not you love me. That's not self, that's ego. I love you. If you want to find a friend, what is the best way to find a friend? Be a friend. If you want to find love, what is the best of finding a love? Love somebody. You want somebody to love you. That's ego. That's ego-centered thinking. But you say, I love you. That's a self. Atman. We say Atman in Sanskrit. Atman is to love. And when you love, you receive love as a gift back. Love begets love. Desire begets desire. War begets war. Whatever you give, you will get it back. And so, if we can have that sense that we love the earth, we love nature, that's a sense of the sacred. Because the sacred means the earth is sacrificing itself. The trees are sacrificing their fruit to feed the world. Feed the humans, animals, birds, insects, wasps, bees. All life is sustained and maintained and nourished and nurtured by nature. So nature is sacred. Sacrificing. And sacrificing without any reward. I'm an, an orchard keeper. I have a beautiful 15 trees of apples, of varieties, all English. All, if you live in Devon and Somerset, we have wonderful, local, traditional, ancient varieties of apples. I love them. I don't touch golden delicious. <laughs> they are neither golden nor delicious. So, I ha and then I planted one seed in the ground. And look at the sacred quality of nature. One seed in the ground. And how small the seed? Can you imagine apple seed? Little pip, tiny pip. You can't eat it. It's too bitter. You, you spit it. It goes into the soil. 
and what the soil does sacred soil sacrificing itself bringing making that seed into a beautiful plant and a tree in due course and a beautiful colorful apple blossom what a sight of beauty of magic the artist paint van gogh paints sunflower monet paints lilies many many great painters have painted trees tree of life tree of knowledge speaking tree look what the earth that soil has done the nature has done turn this beautiful art of imagination art of beauty art of creativity people say nature is not creative nature is not imaginative nature has no life richard dawking again they think nature is dead it's only useful for our purpose but there's nothing more value and those apple uh, blossom those beautiful magical blossom artistic blossom don't just stay for the sake of art they transform themselves into fruit beautiful again beauty and delicious and aromatic the smell the taste the juice I mean, if you have your apple trees just go and imagine and observe the beauty of the tree i always am grateful this is why i say nature is sacred i am grateful to my trees and in this this season now september october november i take these apples and make juice with my hand press no electricity just hand press and the juice coming fresh out of that sacred apple tree an apple tree is always sacred in, the, in england we have forgotten it if you have not tasted that juice you don't know what apple juice tastes like don't buy your apple juice particularly this concentrated apple juice there's no apple juice that's like some sort of joke <laughs> the real apple juice is take your apples and make the juice and it's so delicious so healthy so nutritious and so enjoyable that you cannot imagine but what i'm saying the sacred quality of nature in the apple tree is the apple gives you like mother feeds the baby apple tree and you can use apple as a metaphor for all trees and all plants apple tree feeds you you go to the apple tree it never asks you have you got your visa card <laughs> no no have apples whoever you are you are a saint have apples you are a criminal have apples old young men women children educated uneducated humans animals insects wasps bees whoever you are have apples unconditional love we don't have to go to the bible or quran or bhagavad gita to learn about unconditional love unconditional generosity unconditional giving gift that's a sacrifice sacrifice where people stay in our modern times we have lost the meaning and the understanding of the word sacrifice sacrifice is not something which have a hardship you say ah oh, i have to sacrifice something to give you that's not sacrifice that's arrogance that i i have to give you you feel that apple tree never says oh i have to give you apple i'm sacrificing myself when you give with love and accept yourself as a giver as a kind of in service of the earth and humanity and others then you are sacred like a mother like a husband or wife or parents to the children they don't see it's a hardship to bring up children although it is hard if so i say every mother is a hero but it is quite hard to bring the baby and feed the baby with your own body my mother used to put me because we didn't have nappies in those days when i was a child and i'll pee in the bed as a small baby and and then i'll cry my mother will put me on the dry side of the bed and sleep herself on the wet side can you imagine my tears come from my eyes when i think of my mother so that's a, when i talk about sacred that's a lovingly giving without any expectation and nature is exactly that just imagine what is nature giving us everything what we have when um economy and ecology 
the word we we don't um, understand the economy is not just money economy of nature ecos means home planet home and nomos means management of planet home and ecology means knowledge of planet home so when we know the planet and this is why every school and every university should teach ecology with economy and economy is management of home knowledge of home management of home universities teach economy without teaching ecology i asked them how are you going to manage something you don't know economy is to manage ecology is to know how are you going to manage something you don't know how are you going to teach economy without teaching ecology you must and so may if we can look at nature from a different eye of that gratitude that reverence for life reverence for nature and as and the trees are not just there to give us fruit trees have their intrinsic value it's not about human rights that i'm talking about only i'm talking about rights of nature when the when when you have a mother's rights and woman's rights and feminism in the same way nature's rights so if we can bring that new consciousness of our relationship with natural world and uh, will suggest it that i have been editing resurgence for 40 years as is my love for nature because the resurgence is a magazine of nature sacred nature there are lots of environmental magazines what i call them kind of more reason scientific scientific ecology or scientific environmentalism where they um, they look at nature and and say as a kind of, we have to save nature because it's useful to us i say we have to save nature not only save nature nature can save itself we don't need to save nature nature is sacred we have to revere nature and that is the essence of resurgence magazine and this is why i have been de devoting myself in the service of in a way britain because in magazine comes in britain and it was my mentor ef schumacher a uh, small is beautiful author he i met him in 1973 and and i was going back to india i was here only on a lecture tour and schumacher offered me the editorship of resurgence and i was reluctant i said no no mr uh, mr uh, schumacher i want to go back to india and he said why i said i want to work with the gandhians gandhian movement and he said satish there are many gandhians in india we need one in england <laughs> and stay and edit research there was 1973 so i became editor of researchers just to create this understanding of spiritual ecology it's a magazine of spiritual ecology sacred nature we cannot live by just utilitarian pragmatic uh, uh, materialistic world view the matter has to be compensated and complemented and and balanced with the spirit so our environmental movement our ecology movement our nature movement has to base itself and and build upon the foundation of spiritual ecology so through resurgence through my books i'm yours i'm at your service and we all need to work together in order to and now bristol is going to be a green city of europe in 2015 congratulations for being that and so i would like to see the resurgence be becomes in the service of uh, people in bristol and and every bristolian read resurgence and subscribe to resurgence that's a plug for you yeah and so thank you for inviting me and giving me this chance to speak to you about sacred quality of nature and spiritual ecology without that shadow ecology or shallow ecology or or uh, utilitarian ecology is not going to work so love can save the world love will save the world and love is saving the world with those three lines i thank you again thank you Thank you.